Scale Electrics meets Mario Kart, Anki Overdrive brings car racing to life in your lounge room. Growing up in the 1980s, the two coolest toys any kid could own were a Scale Electric slot car racetrack and Nintendo's NES gaming console. Anki Overdrive marries them for the 21st century, letting you and your friends race real cars around a real track using your smartphones. Anki Overdrive brings the racetrack into your home. Photo Adam Turner get track city at $269. The Anki Overdrive starter kit includes two cars along with four straight pieces of track, including mandatory start-finish line and six quarter turns. This lets you build at least eight different tracks, including two loop tracks thanks to the inclusion of two risers. Skull Red and Ground Shock Blue come with the starter kit, along with the 4K USB charger, and you can buy extra cars like Nuke Green. Photo Adam Turner You can buy extra cars and pieces of track separately, but the starter kit's flexibility means that you're unlikely to grow bored with it quickly. There's also a $299 Fast and Furious edition with custom cars and the ability to play as your favorite movie characters. The Anki track pieces easily clip together with magnets but, unlike Scale Electrics, the track ISNT electrified. Instead you pop the cars on the supplied forker charger, with 10 minutes on the charger buying you around 25 minutes of race time. Each driver needs an iOS or Android device to control their car via Bluetooth, but you don't need to steer around the corners. Cameras on the bottom of the cars let them read the four-lane track, so the cars can guide themselves around the bends just like slot cars. The upside of this design is that you can tilt your smartphone to change lanes, while controlling the accelerator and brake along with an array of weapons and boosts which bring the whole new dimension to the game. You can also race against an eye-controlled car when your friends can't come over to play, with your virtual opponents getting smarter as you level up. The starter kit offers a choice of eight track configurations. The downside of this design is that inviting your friends around for an afternoon's racing can be rather frustrating when you need to stop for a recharge every 25 minutes. To make matters worse, one of the three cars supplied with the review unit only had a 10 minute battery life. The Anki website offers a few tips in this situation, but they didn't do the trick, and Anki has confirmed to me that it will replace cars which arrive in this condition. The figure 8 track is about 4 feet across, but don't spread the risers like this. Place them as close together as possible to reduce the chances of your cars losing it as they come down the drop. Regardless of your design, your cars will spin off the track so it's best to race on the floor. Photo Adam Turner Let's race after the excitement of building your first track. Your first few races against the computer seem rather boring. You simply get on the inside lane and put your foot down to beat your opponent in a few short races. The same goes for your first races against human opponents. The Overdrive app is slick but the controls can be frustrating. You can't slide your left down the accelerator onto the brake pedal. Instead you need to lift your lift off the screen and then aim for the brake while watching the road. Photo Adam Turner At this point you might start to question Overdrive's longevity and wonder whether scale electric style racing was really as cool as you remember. My children experienced the same trough of disillusionment after their first Overdrive race. Thankfully after three races the app starts to unlock new features and race modes for your account, as well as letting you purchase upgrades for your car using your winnings. The app should really explain all this up front, assuring you that those early races are just warm-ups for the main event. Switching to a loop track also makes things more interesting as now the inside lane keeps changing. If the tires or track get dirty, and they will because the track pieces are dust magnets, then you're more likely to spin off. It's frustrating that the track railings are an optional extra, they really should be included as standard. You might be tempted to set up the track on the dining room table but wayward cars will take a tumble. It's also easier to visualize the lane changes when you're looking down at the track on the floor. Power up your weapons once you've finished a few races and your car is armed then overdrive becomes far more engaging, because it's no longer just a straight race for the line. In battle mode you can stun the other cars, with your headlights lighting up as you fire and your opponent's taillights signifying a hit which slows them down. Meanwhile the light on top of your car indicates your health plus you can see your health status on your screen. In your first battle it takes around 3 hits to lose a life, with your car stalling each time you die, and the first racer with 3 kills wins. Battle race mode makes things more interesting again and there are other modes to unlock as you progress. It's a shame the app doesn't explain all this, especially when you're first playing against the computer and you're listening to lame trash talking from the AI drivers with flimsy backstories. 
If you tire of this, then dip into the app settings to kill the music and voices, leaving you with the sound effects of the cars and weapons along with the visual feedback from the car's lights. If you ain't first, you're last at this point my kids and I started to have a lot of fun changing lanes to pull in behind each other, firing off a few shots and then speeding past our stunned opponent. Of course as you sneak up behind someone there's always the risk they could slam on the brakes, swing in behind you and let you have it. You can also play in teams to make things more interesting, such as ganging up against an AI driver. Unfortunately the app's controls can be a little clunky, especially when you're trying to keep your eyes on the track. You slide your left thumb up and down to work the V accelerator, with the brake below, but it would be easier if these buttons were larger and on opposite sides of the screen. There's also an odd limitation which restricts the Android app to smartphones, whereas the iOS app also works on tablets. From here the game starts to feel like Real Racing 3, letting you unlock new features as you level up. You'll find different upgrades and weapons for each car and track configuration, giving Overdrive plenty of staying power if you're interested in that kind of game. Anki also releases monthly updates to keep things interesting, but there's no online leaderboard or ability to ghost race against your online friends. So what's the verdict? My 14-year-old son, let's call him Muzz, was the most enthusiastic about Overdrive, as he loves complex games built around experience points and upgrades. Meanwhile my 11-year-old daughter Venus and I would rather just play. We enjoyed Overdrive once the addition of weapons made it more than a straight racing game but we'd tire of it sooner than Mars, especially after he'd invested the time and effort to unlock all the special moves and became too hard to beat. In the same way, Venus and I are talented button mashers in Street Fighter 2, whereas Mars takes the time to learn all those finicky special moves which make him harder to beat. Likewise, Overdrive has some casual gaming appeal but you really need to invest plenty of time to make the most of it, and hope that your friends are just as keen. Overdrive will have less appeal to little kids who just want to drive, which would be why the game is recommended for those aged 8 and above. Younger children could happily press down the accelerator and watch their car zoom around the track, but they might struggle when you're ready to take things to the next level. The biggest frustration with Overdrive is the 25-minute battery life, but it's the price you pay for a passive track which lets you easily change lanes. My kids kept swapping over to Minecraft on their iPads while we waited for the cars to charge, and you'll also need a fallback activity if you're planning a big afternoon of racing.